So in the 2000s, for the most part, you had licensed games come from either of these two companies. It was either THQ or Activision. With DreamWorks games now being published by the latter, the first DreamWorks game they would publish would be based on Shrek 2. I'm sure most of you don't need me to explain why Shrek 2 is such a great film. It's excellent. If you still haven't seen it, then first off, why are you watching this video? And secondly, go watch this movie. Even if you hated the original Shrek, Shrek 2 is a phenomenal movie that I think everyone should give it a watch at least once. But anyways, Shrek 2's game. I couldn't find that much on its development, but apparently TDK, who had the Shrek license before, were gonna make their own Shrek 2 game, but quickly after that announcement they would be bought out and lose the license as I went over in the last video. But the Shrek 2 game, I actually heard a lot of people played this one. Which makes sense as this game sold extremely well back when it came out, so I can see how a lot of people grew up with it. I didn't play the console one, but I did play a lot of the Game Boy Advance version. It's a really fun puzzle platformer, but I'll save that for whenever I get to all the DreamWorks Game Boy games, whenever that happens somewhere way later down the line. So Shrek 2 came out on the PS2, the GameCube, Xbox, and PC, although on that it's referred to as Shrek 2 Team Action. More on that later. It was developed by Luxoflux. Unfortunately, this studio isn't around anymore, but you may know them for the Vigilante and True Crime series. Also that weird Star Wars demolition game, and they would return for the Kung Fu Panda game. The only game I've played from Luxoflux was the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen game on PS3 and 360, which I remember it being pretty fun. But again, unfortunately, this studio has been gone for a while. But how was their Shrek 2 game? I'll be playing the Xbox version for this video. I even got it in this neat double pack. Man, remember these double packs from this time? These were so cool. So Shrek 2 the game actually expands on the story a bit. In fact, the back of the box even advertises this point. Like you still go through the same stuff as the movie, going to Far Far Away, meeting Puss in Boots, and crashing the big gala at the end. But there are also points in the game where the story does expand to stuff that wasn't in the movie. Here are some examples. In the second level, you actually end up in this dark forest you gotta travel through. There's this one level where you're helping out the three little pigs at this farm, and then one of the last levels you're traveling through these mines. We even have some characters in this game like Red Riding Hood, the fairy, these giant trolls, this leprechaun that either only had a small role in the movie or didn't appear at all. I really like this. I think expanding upon the world is really interesting. Like, sure overall it doesn't change the core plot, but the attempt to expand it a bit and to show more of Shrek's world is really cool. The game itself looks alright. I think the environments look pretty good, but some of the models are a bit odd, and also some of these portraits at the bottom look strange. Oh my gosh, Human Shrek's face looks so amazing and terrible at the same time, I love it. I think most of the models look okay enough, it's just some of them look so weird. I will say, the character animation is pretty smooth, plus the voice acting is pretty good. I think the replacements do a really good job sounding like the original actors. So, what do you do in Shrek 2 the game? Well, it's similar to stuff like Marvel Ultimate Alliance or Nicktoons Unite, that 4 player co-op beat em up style that was pretty common around this time. Your goal is pretty much to get to the end of the stage or complete a certain amount of objectives on your list to complete a level. Pretty simple. You'll be battling a large group of enemies while solving a few simple puzzles here and there. The combat feels pretty good. It's not complicated, in fact it's not very deep at all, but I think it works well enough. The controls feel pretty good, I like how each character feels from one another. Also on that note, I gotta say, I really dig the variety of characters you have. Yeah, you're not just playing as characters like Shrek, Donkey, or Fiona. You got Gingerbread Man, Red Riding Hood, the Big Bad Wolf, Handsome Shrek riding on Donkey, and even a little fairy. It's really cool, and again, they all play and control pretty differently with their own abilities. Donkey has a strong kick he can use to knock down obstacles, Fiona can slow down time, I didn't know ogres can do that. Puss in Boots can walk on tight ropes, and so on. It may seem a little crazy with how many characters there are in this game, but it still retains the same core gameplay even with the multiple characters. The levels are pretty fun too. 
I didn't think there was a single level on this game that was bad. They were all pretty good. I think some of my favorites are far, far away because I really like the task you gotta do for the king and this one moment where you beat the Pied Piper in one hit is pretty funny. I also really like the prison breakout stage. It's just really cool to play as these side characters and I also really enjoyed the mine stage just because it's an interesting location we never saw in the film itself. Every stage also has a hero time section where one character does a special mini game or challenge. And these are pretty fun. Again, I really dig the variety you have. You got one where Fiona blows up the birds with her singing like in Shrek 1. You got one with Donkey where he has to ride on dragon through this canyon. Platform challenge with Jinji. And even this chase in the mines with human Shrek. It's all pretty fun. There are also upgrades you can get by going to this shop. But on my playthrough, I accidentally forgot about it. So I didn't end up getting any upgrades so oops but I don't think you need any of the upgrades since Shrek 2 is pretty easy I died a few times but even without upgrades you should get through this game no problem the bosses I'll be honest are pretty meh they aren't awful but I just found most of them pretty uninteresting the final boss was pretty decent though but that's kind of it. But the biggest problem with the entire game that unfortunately does really affect it pretty hard is its speed. If you remember my Nicktoons Unite video, my biggest problem with the game was how slow it was, and Shrek 2 unfortunately has this exact same problem. Everyone moves so slow. Like for some of the early levels, maybe it's not too bad, but the later levels, man, it makes some of these stages just drag on and on. And when you're playing by yourself, which is what I had to do for this video, I won't lie, it got a bit tedious by the end. Let me be upfront though. Shrek 2 is a solid game overall. I really like the expanded story, the different characters you play as, the hero time sequences, and the main core gameplay is solid. But man, that slowness with all the characters really starts to show near the last couple stages. If you can get past that, then you can still have a decent time overall, but I would highly recommend trying to play this with other people. I feel playing with friends, you can overlook how slow the characters are, and it won't feel like the last couple stages drag on. But yeah, that's actually all I have to say about this game. It's solid overall. I would recommend it. But one thing you might be wondering is, why does the PC version have that team action subtitle? Well, that's because the actual Shrek 2 on PC is an entirely different game. Yep, despite sharing the same name, it's a completely separate game from the console version. There wasn't a lot I can find out about this version's development, but it was developed by a studio called No Wonder, which from what I found out is part of Amaze Entertainment, who would actually do the Shrek the Third game later on. But No Wonder did a bunch of PC games of various licensed games. Heck, if you watched my Finding Nemo video, the PC version I mentioned was also by No Wonder. So hey, a little connection right there. But yeah, my first PC only game I'm looking at for the channel. I don't normally look at PC games, especially for older games. I usually like sticking to console versions when possible. But if I can get more of them working, I think it would be interesting to talk about more PC-only games in the future. And thankfully, I did get this game working just fine. The only two issues I had were the music wasn't playing at all, although from what I found out, it's the same soundtrack from the console version. But I didn't really mind it without music. If anything, it just makes the game more atmospheric with just the environment sounds you hear. It's weirdly kind of relaxing. The only other issue I found was this one FMV just broke, but that was pretty much it. Other than those issues, it played perfectly fine. So again, the story is the same as the film, although it's actually much closer to the film's plot than the console game. There aren't any big deviations that happen. The closest I can name is maybe when you're ambushed in the forest before you reach far, far away, but that is such a short sequence. I guess it's fine that it sticks closer to the film's plot, and I will say, like the console version, the animations and voice acting is still pretty good, and it can also be pretty funny sometimes. Good, Donkey. Need to wrap up a few things here. I'll meet you on the outside. Yeah, you said that in my level. Man, do we have to keep saying the same lines over and over? 
The environments look pretty good for a PC game, and the models look decent, although I think it's supposed to be the same models from the console version by Luxoflux. At least, that's what the end credits said. Now this game is really weird. It's a linear 3D platformer where you play as Shrek, Donkey, both of their gorgeous forms, Puss in Boots, and even the giant gingerbread man Mongo in one level. I thought the controls were fine for the most part, but the double jump is so weird. It feels really stiff here. It wasn't enough to really harm the game, but it was annoying. The levels are okay. Nothing really stood out aside from maybe the Mongo level, but even then, it's over before you know it. The combat is really simple, just keep clicking the mouse button and you'll win just fine. Like there is no strategy to it, just click to win. The enemy variety in general is pretty small. All you'll be fighting is bandits with maybe the occasional knights and factory workers. The bosses are actually even easier than the console fights, no kidding, look how fast I beat this guy. You can also buy these potions from the shop which you can use either on yourself for an effect like shrinking or you can use them on enemies like freezing them and then shattering them. That honestly feels really satisfying. The potions are neat. I didn't use them that much aside from the freeze potion, but hey, I guess it makes the combat a little more interesting. If it sounds like I'm skimming through a lot of the game, well, that's because this game is really short. You can beat it in around an hour and a half, way shorter than the console version. That's just the entire game. I didn't dislike it, I appreciate a few things about it, and it is really interesting that a completely different version of the Shrek 2 game exists. I'm also really glad it didn't drag out like the console version. But as a game, it's really something you just experience just for the novelty of it. It's very shallow, and you could beat it in around an hour and a half. I get it's made for a much younger audience in mind, but it's just kinda there. If you can get this game working and you're like me and you find these obscure PC versions interesting, then yeah, it wouldn't hurt to give it a shot, but otherwise, it's nothing that special. Maybe there's a reason they decided to bring over the console version to PC later on and act like the original PC version didn't exist. It reviewed much better compared to the PC version and it sold extremely well. Heck, on the Shrek 2 Team Action box, it literally states, based on the hit console video game. I can definitely say that was a smart move. But yeah, that is both Shrek 2 games. Honestly, not bad at all. I definitely think you should play the console version with other people if possible, but even by yourself, I still would recommend it. The PC version I can only recommend if you're nostalgic for these old PC games and you could get it working on your PC nowadays. It's fine for what it is, but you're really not missing much. So yeah, not a bad start for this new era of DreamWorks games. But hmm, looking at the extras menu of this game, it has a Shark Tale game trailer. Well, the next time we look at DreamWorks games, let's take a look at that Shark Tale game and see if it's something. If you like this video, give it a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Plus, let me know in the comments if you've played either version of Shrek 2, either console or PC, and what did you think of both of them? Anyways, I hope you all have an amazing day, and take care. Bye!